In the middle of the wedding, the priest notices something strange about the bride and stops everything. In a quiet town, a peculiar wedding was about to take place. The groom Ezekiel, a loner who had recently found love in his 40s, was about to marry a mysterious woman named Stephanie. Stephanie had never shown her face in public, always hidden under a veil, sparking the curiosity of the entire village. During the wedding ceremony, the priest Father Oswald felt something was amiss and decided to lift the bride's veil, revealing a terrifying sight that led to the revelation of her true identity. In the tranquil heart of the countryside, there nestled a small and assuming village, a place where everyone knew everyone and daily routines were as predictable as the sunrise. Yet a palpable excitement was stirring through the narrow cobbled streets, rustling the quiet like a sudden wind. The village was preparing for a wedding ceremony, an event significant enough to break the usual humdrum of life. Father Oswald, the village's wise and revered priest, was the person designated to marry the couple. The kindly priest, known for his soothing sermons and the comforting presence he brought, had presided over many such events, but even he found himself taken aback by the unusual size of the congregation. The humble chapel, usually half-empty, was now teeming with villagers, each face reflecting a mix of anticipation and curiosity. In this remote corner of the world, weddings were far from common. The small population meant that matrimony was a rare occasion, but it wasn't the infrequency of nuptials that brought the throng of villagers to the chapel. The curiosity was stirred by something, or rather someone else, the bride Stephanie. Stephanie was an enigma, a riddle that no one in the village could quite solve. She was a woman who had never revealed her face in public, a face forever shrouded beneath a thick veil. This peculiar habit had naturally drawn much attention and speculation. Whispers floated among the villagers, theories were spun, but none could decipher the mystery that was Stephanie. Her concealed visage was a canvas upon which the villagers painted their assumptions and fears. Some speculated she was hiding a disfigurement. Others believed her to be of foreign descent trying to assimilate slowly into their village life. There were those who spun tales of her being a runaway noble hiding from a dark past. But no matter the story, the common thread was the veil, the elusive barrier that kept Stephanie's true identity hidden. As the wedding day approached, the whispers grew louder, the speculations wilder. The villagers, usually concerned with their crops and livestock, found themselves caught up in this curious mystery. The local baker, the blacksmith, the children playing in the square, everyone was intrigued by Stephanie and her unyielding veil. The groom, a well-known figure in the village, seemed unperturbed by this bride's unusual habit. If anything, it appeared to endear her to him even more. Yet, his acceptance only fanned the flames of curiosity among the villagers. The day of the ceremony saw an early flurry of activity. Homes were left vacant, chores forgotten as villagers flocked to the chapel. The air buzzed with a cocktail of excitement, curiosity, and a tinge of anxiety. As the congregation settled into the worn wooden pews, all eyes were trained on the front of the chapel where Father Oswald stood, a figure of calm amidst the brewing storm of anticipation. And there beside him stood Stephanie, her face hidden beneath the customary veil, the object of the village's collective curiosity. The chapel fell into a hush as the ceremony began, the only sound being the steady cadence of Father Oswald's voice. As the villagers watched, the mystery of the veiled bride continued to hang in the air, as tangible as the nervous excitement that filled the chapel. In the quaint, unassuming village nestled in the countryside, a sense of palpable anticipation was stirring. The mystery was unfolding, one involving two of its residents, Ezekiel, the village's solitary figure, and his betrothed Stephanie, a woman cloaked in veils and mysteries of her own. Ezekiel was a well-known character in the village, albeit for his notorious reclusiveness. A man in his forties, he had lived most of his life in solitude, keeping his own company and seldom stepping outside his humble abode. His interactions with the villagers were minimal, his words sparse. His life was a picture of solitude sketched by his own hands. It seemed almost inconceivable that he of all people would be the one standing at the altar ready to exchange vows of matrimony. His forthcoming marriage raised many eyebrows and the topic was the source of much speculation among the villagers. How did Ezekiel, a man so fiercely protective of his solitude, manage to find love? It was a question on everyone's lips, a riddle that begged solving. However, it was not Ezekiel's unexpected plunge into matrimony that was the primary source of intrigue. The villagers were more captivated by the mystery of his bride-to-be Stephanie. Stephanie was an enigma in her own right. Her peculiar choice of attire, large oversized clothes with long sleeves regardless of the weather made her stand out. But what intrigued the villagers the most was the veil that she always wore. But what intrigued the villagers the most was the veil that she always wore, a cloth barrier that hid her face from the world. The veil was her constant companion, a shield that guarded her identity, making her a figure of fascination and curiosity among the villagers. Just like her future husband, she was a puzzle, a mystery wrapped in a riddle and the villagers were keen to solve it. As the day of the wedding drew closer, the whispers grew louder. Each villager had a theory, a speculation, a guess about Stephanie's ever-present veil and Ezekiel's unexpected plunge into matrimony. The children, the baker, the village elders, everyone was intrigued and caught up in the anticipation. On the day of this ceremony, the village was a flurry of activity. Ezekiel, usually so reserved, seemed more at ease, his face reflecting a quiet anticipation. Stephanie, on the other hand, remained an enigma, her face hidden beneath the veil, her silence adding to the mystery. 
As the villagers gathered in the chapel, their curiosity was at its peak. All eyes were on the couple standing before Father Oswald, ready to exchange their vows. Ezekiel the loner was about to wed Stephanie, the woman with a veil, and the air was thick with speculation and anticipation. Yet as the ceremony commenced and the familiar words of matrimony echoed in the chapel, there was a sense of peace. It was as if the village had come to accept the mysteries of Ezekiel and Stephanie, for in the end love was a riddle in itself, one that didn't always need solving. The village was painted with colors of festivity and anticipation as the wedding day approached. Amidst the excitement, however, was a persistent undercurrent of doubts and speculations. The villagers found themselves torn between celebration and apprehension, the joy of the occasion punctuated with whispered questions and theories. Ezekiel, a man whose life was primarily marked by solitude, was about to take a leap into the unknown, into the world of matrimony. The villagers couldn't help but wonder about the nature of the bond between Ezekiel and Stephanie. Had Ezekiel seen his bride-to-be's face, or was he charmed solely by the allure of her dark, expressive eyes? The only visible part of Stephanie that peeked from behind the veil were her eyes. Dark, captivating, and full of mystery. Was it the enigma in those eyes that had drawn Ezekiel towards Stephanie? The question hung in the air, whispers carried by the wind, as the villagers pondered on the upcoming union. The speculation, however, was not limited to the villagers alone. Ezekiel's family, too, found themselves grappling with doubts and apprehensions. Ezekiel's parents were old, their lives weathered by time and circumstance. They had seen their son live a life of seclusion, his interactions limited, and his social circle virtually non-existent. The announcement of his marriage had come as a surprise, a bolt from the blue. They had always hoped that their son would find companionship, but the unexpected nature of this union and the mystery surrounding Stephanie had left them with a sense of unease. Yet they chose to keep their doubts to themselves, burying their apprehensions beneath a facade of hope and joy. Their primary concern was their son's happiness. They hoped that the woman behind the veil, the woman who had managed to capture Ezekiel's heart, would bring their son the joint companionship he had long missed. They hoped that this marriage, shrouded in mystery as it was, would mark a new happy chapter in Ezekiel's life. As the wedding ceremony neared, the village was abuzz with activity. The chapel was adorned with flowers, the air filled with the scent of freshly baked goods and the sounds of quiet anticipation. The villagers, too, were preparing themselves, their minds filled with questions, their hearts hoping for the best. Despite the whispers and speculations, the joyous occasion could not be dimmed. The villagers, along with Ezekiel's family, chose to set aside their apprehensions, at least for the moment, and join in the celebration. After all, love often worked in mysterious ways and perhaps this was one such mystery that didn't need immediate unraveling. As the day of the wedding arrived, the village was bathed in a mix of joy, hope, and curiosity. All eyes were on Ezekiel and Stephanie, two individuals about to step into a new journey together. Amidst the doubts and speculations, one sentiment remained constant, a silent wish for their happiness. The sun was beginning to set as the villagers gathered around the chapel, their faces reflecting a mix of joy, curiosity, and apprehension. The chapel bells tolled, signaling the beginning of the ceremony, and all eyes turned towards the chapel door. Stephanie emerged, clad in a long, flowing wedding dress, her face hidden beneath the veil. There was an audible gasp from the crowd, the air thick with anticipation. Father Oswald stood at the altar, his hands slightly trembling as he prepared to officiate the ceremony. He'd married countless couples throughout his tenure, but this one felt different. As Stephanie approached, a sense of unease washed over him. There was something about her that he couldn't put his finger on, something that was unsettling. He pushed aside his apprehensions, reminding himself of his duty. The ceremony began, the chapel filled with the sound of prayers and hymns. Father Oswald began the rites, his voice echoing through the chapel. As he neared the part of the ceremony where the bride and groom would exchange their vows, he asked Stephanie to repeat after him. When Stephanie spoke, her voice sent chills down his spine. It was an eerie, haunting sound that filled the chapel, causing a hush to fall over the congregation. Father Oswald felt a shiver run through him, his sense of unease growing. Ignoring the confused looks from the crowd, he made a decision. He would lift the veil. As he reached out, his hand shaking, he slowly lifted the veil that had been the source of so much speculation. What he saw underneath sent a wave of shock and horror through him. Stephanie's features were horrifying, a stark contrast to the beautiful woman they had all imagined her to be. Her eyes, once thought to be dark and captivating, were now filled with an unnatural glow. Her skin was pale, her lips a ghostly shade of blue, and her teeth sharp and pointed. It was a face that seemed straight out of a nightmare. Father Oswald took a step back, his heart pounding in his chest. The chapel erupted into chaos as the villagers gasped in shock, some screaming, others praying fervently. The horrifying truth was out, Stephanie was a witch. The realization sent waves of fear throughout the congregation. They were about to witness her marriage to Ezekiel and all along she'd been hiding her true identity. The joyous occasion had turned into a nightmare, the chapel now filled with cries of horror and disbelief. The ceremony was abruptly halted, the once joyous atmosphere replaced with terror and confusion. Father Oswald, shaken but resolute, stood his ground. The villagers too were left to confront the shocking revelation. The quiet village once filled with anticipation for the wedding was now enveloped in fear, the horrifying truth about Stephanie's identity casting a dark shadow over them. The veil fell from Stephanie's face, revealing her true form, a sight so grotesque that it sent the crowd into a terrified frenzy. The once serene church was thrown into a state of utter pandemonium. Villagers screamed in horror, pushing and shoving to escape the confines of the sacred building. 
The scene was reminiscent of a distressed standhill, people scrambling in every direction, their faces filled with fear. Yet amidst the chaos, some of the older villagers fell to their knees, their faces creased with fear, but their eyes filled with unwavering faith. Their lips moved fervently, uttering silent prayers of her divine protection, their hands clasped tightly together. Mothers clutched their children, whispering soothing words as they shielded their innocent eyes from the horror unfolding before them. Father Oswald stood at the altar, his heart pounding against his chest like a drum. The sight of Stephanie's demonic visage had sent a chill down his spine, but he knew he had to act. He was the shepherd of his flock, and it was his duty to protect his people. Summoning his courage, Father Oswald raised his voice over the chaos. Fear not, he called out, his voice echoing through the church. There was a momentary pause in the cacophony as heads turned towards him. The terror in their eyes was palpable, but so was the glimmer of hope. Psalm 91, Father Oswald declared, his voice resonating with a strength that belied his fear. He began reciting the powerful prayer for divine protection, his voice steady and confident. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. As the words of the psalm filled the air, a semblance of calm began to descend on the crowd. The villagers, inspired by Father Oswald's courage, joined him in prayer, their voices harmonizing with his in a chorus of faith and hope. The atmosphere in the church began to shift. The raw panic was gradually replaced by a sense of unity and resilience. Despite the fear that had gripped their hearts, the villagers found comfort in their faith and in their community. Meanwhile, Father Oswald kept his eyes fixed on Stephanie, ready to confront whatever came next. His voice did not waver as he continued to recite the psalm, his voice serving as a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. In that moment, the church was a stark juxtaposition of terror and faith. The congregation, though shaken, stood their ground, their voices united in prayer, their faith unwavering. The sight of Stephanie's true form had thrown their world into chaos, but their faith in unity gave them the strength to face the horror before them. The sacredness of the church was palpable as Father Oswald, standing tall at the altar, continued his prayer, his voice resonating with conviction. Holy water gleamed in the soft light as he sprinkled it towards Stephanie, each droplet reflecting his unwavering faith. Stephanie, the witch in disguise, recoiled as the blessed water hit her, each droplet searing her skin like a spark of holy fire. She hissed and snarled, her unearthly voice echoing eerily around the church. Her dark eyes flashed with malevolence, a stark contrast to the sanctuary's serene atmosphere. Father Oswald remained undeterred, his faith an impenetrable shield. The congregation watched in horrified fascination as the spiritual warfare unfolded before their eyes. The tension in the air was tangible like the calm before a storm, as everyone waited with bated breath for the next move. Then, in an unexpected turn of events, Stephanie began to speak. Her voice, once sweet and enchanting, was now a raspy whisper that sent chills down the spines of those who heard it. She revealed her sinister plan, to use the sanctity of marriage, one of the most revered sacraments, as a means to mock God and his followers. The revelation was chilling, eliciting gasps of horror from the congregation. But Stephanie had underestimated the power of faith. She had thought the villagers were simple folk, easy to manipulate and control. She had not expected their unwavering belief or their spiritual strength of Father Oswald. She had not foreseen that the love and unity of the community would serve as their shield against her malevolent intentions. As Father Oswald continued his prayers, the power of his faith seemed to intensify. The holy water seemed to burn brighter, and his voice grew stronger, echoing through the church like a mighty war cry. The villagers too joined in, their voices blending in a symphony of faith that seemed to shake the very foundations of the church. Stephanie, once confident and menacing, now seemed to weaken under the onslaught of their collective faith. She shrieked in pain and frustration, her form flickering like a candle in the wind. Her dark eyes, once full of malice, now reflected fear and defeat. After a tense struggle that seemed to stretch into an eternity, the church doors burst open and Stephanie fled, her horrifying form disappearing into the darkness. A collective sigh of relief swept through the congregation as the realization of their deliverance from evil settled in. Tears of relief streamed down the villagers' faces as they fell to their knees, their hearts overflowing with gratitude. They hugged their loved ones tighter, their faces reflecting a mixture of fear, relief, and profound gratitude. Father Oswald, his face weary but triumphant, offered a final prayer of thanks for their deliverance. His voice, though hoarse from intense struggle, was steady and filled with gratitude. We thank you, Lord, for your protection and your mercy. We praise you for your unfailing love and your boundless grace, he prayed. As the echoes of his prayer faded into silence, the villagers began to leave the church, their steps lighter and their hearts filled with renewed faith. The evening had started with joy and anticipation, had turned into a horrifying ordeal and ended with a renewed sense of faith and unity. The villagers would remember this day not as a day of fear and horror, but as a day when their faith was tested and proved stronger than any evil force. It was a day when they came together as a community, faced a terrifying adversary and emerged victorious, their faith and unity serving as their greatest weapon against the darkness.